Uh, in this video we look at a classic projectile motion problem that we're going to analyze. Um, and many of you have probably analyzed these before, but you probably didn't use calculus tools to do it. So we're going to redo this problem, or this type of problem, but we're going to analyze it completely using what we know about calculus. So the scenario is a paintball is fired directly upward with an initial velocity of 224 feet per second, and we're assuming it's launched from the ground. And so the first question we're asked is how high does the paintball go? So with a calculator, it's not so bad, right? You'd want, to, you'd, you'd want to graph the height of your paintball as a function of time and then just use the calculator tools to find the max. Well, we're going to do that, but we're going to do it without a picture. We're going to use calculus. So I have in, in this box up here just a, a few reminders. We're going to want to focus our attention on this function, the position function um, of the paintball as a function of time. And notice we need to know the initial position the initial velocity and the um, the gravitational uh, the the acceleration due to gravity of the paintball, and since this situation is given in feet, that means that our function is going to be s of t equals starting from the ground, so that's going to be zero. S s sub zero is uh, going to be zero. The initial vertical velocity is two hundred twenty four feet per second and um, our gravitational, or the acceleration due to gravity is 32, uh, 32 feet per second squared, so that must mean we're going to have our function reduced to this. Minus 16t squared. All right, so now we've got our function, which gives us the height of the paintball as a function of time. And so how high does the paintball go? Well, we have to think about what's true about the ball at the instant it's at its highest point. When it's at its highest point, we know that the velocity is zero. Um, it's the one instance in the scenario where the velocity is zero aside from when you first it's first launched and when it lands. So what we'd want to do is find the velocity or find the, the velocity function and then set that equal to zero and solve for t uh, the time. Since velocity is the derivative of position, then we know our velocity function is going to be 224 minus 32t, using our differentiation rules there. And so now I'm just going to set this equal to 0 and solve for the time. So that must mean that 224 equals 32t, and dividing by 32, it looks like we get that this is all going to happen when t is equal to 7. All right. So it says how high does the paintball go? We just found the time at which the highest, uh, at which the paintball is highest. So the max height. I'm just going to write the max height occurs. at t equals 7 seconds and the actual maximum height is going to be the output of the position function at 7 so s of 7 equals 224 times 7 minus 16 times 7 squared which ends up giving us a final uh, height of 784 feet. All right, so its maximum height is 784 feet. So the thing to appreciate, even though that might seem like a simple example, what you need to appreciate is that we didn't use any technology. We used calculus, all right? And, and it was this, this fact about the derivative, uh, the, the, the velocity function being zero, which is the derivative of our position, um, that at the instant that the ball is at its highest point. Let's continue on with this example. Um, we're next asked to find the velocity of the paintball when it's 208 feet above the ground on the way up, and then also on the way down. 
So the first thing we'll want to do is find out the time at which this ball is 208 feet above the ground. And so we can set our position function equal to 208 and solve for time. And then what we'll do is we'll plug that time value into our velocity function. All right, so now again, we could just use a calculator to solve this, but I'm just going to be a little old-fashioned, get everything on one side. Now this kind of seems like a nightmare to solve, but it turns out these all are divisible by 16. So if you divide through by 16, you get t squared minus 14t plus 13, and that factors to t minus 1, t minus 13, and that tells us that um, when t is 1 second and when t is 13 seconds, the ball is 208 feet above the ground. So Intuitively, it should be the case that on the way up, uh, that's after one second. So one second after you, it, uh, you release the paintball on the way up, it's going to be 208 feet above the ground. So the question is, what's the velocity? So remember that our velocity function, which is the derivative of our position function, is going to be 224 minus 32t. So we can say on the way up, Our velocity v of 1 is equal to 224 minus 32 times 1, which is equal to 192 feet per second. And on the way down, on the way down, we're evaluating the velocity at 13. and that ends up giving us negative 192 feet per second. So you might notice that those are those are the same number and absolute value but just different sign and that's because there's symmetry in this. Anytime you have projectile motion or at least um, projectile motion in which you're throwing something up straight into the air there's some symmetry with regard to velocity and uh, at any given instant, its velocity is going to be the same, um, I'm sorry, its speed is going to be the same as it will be on the way down at that instant, just in, in, in the opposite direction. So the velocities will be opposite. Um, what's the acceleration of the paintball at any time t? Well, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So our acceleration is our deriv the derivative of velocity. So our acceleration is going to be negative 32 because the derivative of 224 is 0, the derivative of negative 32t is negative 32, and that makes sense because that is the acceleration due to gravity, so we should expect that to have happened. And then lastly, when does the paintball hit the ground? Well, we know it hits the ground when our position function is equal to 0. So let's set our position function equal to 0. And again, I think you can divide through by 16 conveniently. So this is 14t minus, uh, sorry, through by 16. I think I said 14 um, minus t squared. And then this gives us, if you factor out a t, 14 minus t. And so it looks like at t equals 0, the ball hits the ground, but of course that's not really what happens because that's when the ball, the paintball is released, but also when t is equal to 14. So it hits the ground uh, after 14 seconds. So let's just finish by looking at the graphs of these functions. We'll you notice that the position, velocity, and acceleration functions are all related by their derivatives. The derivative of our position functions of velocity, the derivative of the velocity functions acceleration. Um, there are certain things you can you can note about this example or these this 
these three graphs. One is that uh, the position function in this case is a quadratic. The velocity function is therefore linear, and the acceleration is therefore constant. Um, there's other things you can notice. One is that the velocity function is 0 at t equals 7, which also is where our position function has a horizontal tangent, which makes sense because velocity is the rate of change of position, and its rate of change at that instant is 0. So there's many relationships you can look at, and one of the things that's important as you go through calculus, for the first time at least, is that this whole position velocity acceleration analogy or, or uh, situation, it's useful to fall back on when you're trying to make sense of problems that don't involve position, velocity, and acceleration. I mean, this is the classic first place to start because people who invented calculus were studying uh, planetary motion. But there are other rates of change and other type of si situations that are not, uh, that have nothing to do with these things, but you can still use the metaphor and the analogy of these things um, as a kind of a crutch or something to fall back on to help make sense of problems. So uh, it's, it's very useful to get a good handle on this relationship so that you can apply the principles of calculus to other, other contexts.